Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube. Happy Litha or summer solstice or whatever you call the holiday that we're about to celebrate. Um, I am filming this very close to sunset because it has been very hot here. Very hot. Uh, it was about 92 today, which isn't like as hot as it could be, but we're also having um, what the meteorologists are calling a flash drought which is where we've had no rain for two weeks and there's no rain scheduled for the next week. The lack of rain plus the high temperatures are making things dry out exceptionally fast, uh, which means that the plants are suffering. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of crispy grass that's going and a few other dry things. But uh, anyway, we're gonna do just a really quick tour because we're losing the light. Um, this is the first time of day it's been actually comfortable enough for me to go outside because I don't do well with sweating, so not anymore anyway so let's get to it so uh first off you can see uh, let me see where i can see this here so the bird bed is actually filled in echinacea is blooming the monarda is blooming um blueberries are done i never actually put the bird netting up i got a decent amount of blueberries off of them from the birds regardless because they were mostly going after the mulberries at that time they like those better so anyway um, you can see uh, my hose is just a mess. I haven't even bothered to wind it back up again because I'm using it everywhere all the time. All the time. Buckets out like it's hot as hell. So uh, raspberries are basically done and not looking very happy. But that's because after they fruit they always die back. So that's a normal thing. You can see there's like the new canes are doing okay because these are the ones that will fruit next year. So uh veggie beds though are loving this they've been getting the most water i've been doing the most watering with them um trying different things you can see i put pole beans on the supports for my tomatoes and so far that seems to be working well tomatoes are not impacted in the slightest i got a bunch of flowers this is my cherry tomato which does have where are you at there you are little baby tomato on it um and then these other four are big ox heart tomatoes and they haven't quite made any fruits for me yet but you can tell by the flowers it's coming soon it's coming soon so and then of course i have my that's a little calendula there i've got zucchini you can see there's a couple little baby zucchini starting in there uh borage over here getting ready to bloom um this is the datura plant that has just kind of popped up in the middle here you can tell we're getting close to sunset because that is also blooming and also made a whole lot of cool little seed pods for me. Uh, there's a second little smaller Daytora here. And then in the in-between is like Swiss chard and carrots and eggplant and peppers and fun stuff like that. Uh, one very cool thing that I've noticed, um, let's take another look at that Daytora leaf. See all those holes in the leaf? That's caused by flea beetles. The um, flea beetles like to go after the, the nightshade family plants, the tomatoes and peppers. Um, usually, they go crazy after my tomatoes. But you can see my tomatoes don't have any holes. For some reason, the flea beetles love the Daytora more than anything. Um, and the Daytora doesn't seem to be bothered by it all that much, other than the fact that the leaves are a little more unsightly. So this has actually been a really excellent trap plant for the flea beetles um, because the flea beetles are exclusively eating the datura and the datura doesn't give a shit so i haven't had to spray for flea beetles at all this year because of this so i'm really hoping i get datura in my tomato bed again next year because that will be cool all right anyway moving on uh this bed here you can see i got a little pumpkin here there's another one on the other side we'll see whether i actually get a pumpkin off of these or not this is a pumpkin that i just grab the seed from at the grocery store that I really like because it tasted good. Uh, other stuff in this bed is broom corn, which I know I've made a video on before. I'm planting that again. And then along the edges here, there's some smaller ones here, um, but there's more on the other side. That is actually, um, I want to call, call it sorrel, but that's, that's what they call it in Jamaica. It's a uh, Jamaica or the um, hibiscus, the, the hibiscus that you use for making tea, like, yeah. So I'm trying my hand at growing those. And then along the north side here, we have some cucumbers that are starting to grow up the trellis. And interspersed in there is the physalis, which is starting to make 
the little fruits there. That's also the Cape Gooseberry is another name for that plant. Um, choke cherry. Uh, this bed is kind of in a weird interim phase. So you can see that the lettuce that was in here is bolting because it's now gotten so hot. Uh, radishes actually need to be harvested, which means I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to plant in the in-between there. There are some other plants here that still need some time, like this one right here. This is a leek, so this is going to continue to grow over the summer and hopefully be ready for harvest in the fall. I also have some... This guy right here is dill. There's dill planted in there as well. Um, and then of course the parsley. And my peas actually haven't even flowered yet, so I don't know if I'm going to get any peas this year. Oh, I say that and now I find a flower. So there's my first flower from the peas. So we'll see how many of those I get. Strawberries, of course, are, are loving it. They've been sending runners all over the place. Look at, just look at how many runners are coming off of this one strawberry plant right here. So, so I'll have a lot of strawberries in this bed next year. Uh, which is good because this bed over here, uh, this is one that's gotten really hit hard by the drought, you can see. Uh, it's very crispy looking, so I'm going to have to run a sprinkler over there soon. Apples are appling. Here's my apples growing in there. This is the Arkansas Black. This one always has been a better producer than the other one. Uh, but this one has a lot more apples on it this year than last year. Last year it had two. So this one is the... Get a better lighting there. That's the Albemarle Pippin. So this one's got probably a good 20, 25 apples on it, which is actually about the same as the Arkansas Black this year. So that's really cool. Uh, this was a gift I got from a friend. It's a bunch of firewood. So it's out here starting to dry in season. I'll get an axe and split it. So I'll have firewood for the for the fire pit and the, the fireplace soon. Uh, oh good, these guys are looking a lot better. This is my bayberry these three along the wall here. Um, you can see the, the new edging is actually the, the old deck boards that we pulled out that were too rotted and that we had to replace. Rather than just throwing them in the dump, they're now, they're now border. <laughs> so this bayberry, of course, was looking very sad yesterday, but I ran up a sprinkler on it yesterday, so it's looking a little better. Coming around here, you can see all my dead, just bare dirt. Um... This is an area, oh my gosh, look at that. That hydrangea is looking very sad back there. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but see how its leaves are just kind of drooping down like that? That means I need to run the sprinkler back there. So that's going to be my next place to run the sprinkler is right over there. We have blackberries starting to come in, so that's exciting. I see you hiding under there. I bet you this one's actually ready. Maybe? No, oh, it's still got a little bit of tightness to it. Give it another day or two. So, oh, that Menarda is looking really dry over here, too. So this is a spot that needs a sprinkler for sure. Uh, this spot did get a sprinkler yesterday, so the stuff in the pots is looking a lot better. It was looking very sad yesterday. Um, you can see I'm starting to make some progress with the weeding. Not fast enough to keep up with the weeds, but I'm trying. This is just a tricky spot where a lot of the plants that I put in here haven't really filled in, so. Um, and some of them are just like being cut down to their prime. This one right here, my blue vervain. I have this one little flower on it. I had another stalk right here. It got snapped off when the, uh, the guys came to service the heat pump. So, but the agrimony really seems to like this spot. It is blooming like crazy right here. So I'm going to let the agrimony fill in a little bit more. Um, the mugwort is like way back there in the shade and not doing as hot. So I'm actually going to bring that forward. I'm going to dig it up and bring it out where it can get a little bit more sun. And hopefully it'll do better next year. Oh, the soil is still a little damp over here. That's good. That's good. So, and then, oh, did he, nope. There was a bird there getting some water. <laughs> the birds always come here for water. Oh my gosh. My pond water levels have been dropping like crazy. So, let's see, I've trimmed back the meadow sweet here. Um, well, let me see, how much have you dropped? Yeah, so that's dropped about an inch and a half since yesterday, which is crazy. That's crazy. 
but anyway, fish are doing okay. I'll have to come out. Um, maybe tomorrow I'll come out and just give it another spritz to refill it. Everything else is doing well. You can see there's still some flower stalks on the meadow sweet. I cut back a lot of the ones that had started to go to seed, but I'm leaving a couple of them. Blue Angel Host is blooming. This one will be later. Uh, this rose is getting ready to bloom again. Look at that. That's my ebb tide rose. Ugh. Step over that one. Look at that. So that's got some new buds on it. And then, of course, these were the, the first spring buds right here making some hips. So. And I have a mimosa tree back there. God bless it. I'm going to have to dig that thing out. Otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the butt. But, yeah. Very, very dry out here. It's so dry. So, yeah. I don't even know what else to say beyond that. Like, it's been a struggle just to, just to keep things watered. So, didn't I move? I thought I moved the comfrey out there. It looks like it died back. That's unfortunate. Well, I'll have to try that again probably die back because it's so dry. Um, so maybe in the fall I'll move the comfrey out. That's another one that I'm going to move out. Because um, it's just, it's getting too much shade, I think, and that's why it's not growing in as much as it used to. So I'll move it back out where it gets some more sun and we'll be happy again, and then we'll be good. But anyway, I'm going to cut this off before the camera cuts, cuts it off for me. So I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.